Those who are having success with annual ryegrass point to several key factors growers should keep in mind. First is the way you plant the cover crop. Consider aerial seeding it into standing corn or beans. Otherwise, it's very important to plant annual ryegrass soon after your corn or soybean harvest. Planting early will ensure adequate growth of the annual ryegrass prior to winter. Those roots are growing all winter long, even under the snow. And that's where with our snow cover, we kind of insulate the ground. We may see a little more root growth over the winter than uh, farther south of us does. To minimize winter kill, first of all, you got to get the, got to get a stand. Um, and that means getting it on early enough that, that you have a good probability for stand establishment so that the, the plant is actually well established in the soil, which means don't go beyond the recommended planting dates by very much. Okay, and the recommended planting dates are going to vary uh, based on where you are in the state, but your, your local agronomist or state agronomist with NRCS uh, can give you pretty good advice on that. And if you push it two or three weeks past that, uh, you're just really risking that you're going to get good establishment. The preferred method is seeding the ryegrass with a no-till drill, about one quarter to one half inch deep. In some years, however, this may be too late in the season. In either case, having moisture for germination is important. Well, first year we seeded annual ryegrass, we did it with a uh, 750 John Deere drill, as probably everybody does, and that worked very well, got started very quickly. Um, but it was very slow and we were wanting to cover ground quick so we went to a Phillips Harrow with a Valmar seeder mounted on top of it which we could cover a lot of ground really fast. It worked very well because of timing, wanting to get it on as quick as we could right after the harvest. This past year though we have flew everything on with an airplane and really are excited about the prospects of that. Seeding with a drill provides optimal seed to soil contact and is the most reliable way to establish good early growth. However, this is also the most labor-intensive method, especially if harvest is still underway or delayed. I think uh, seeding is, is, there's no cookbook answer. Uh, the most reliable is probably drilling uh, because of the good soil seed contact, but the limitation is it's a little bit late in some years. And so I think growers do need to look at what the situation is in that particular year. Um, an air seeder with a, a harrow, a drill, um, aerially seeding with a plane, uh, they're going to basically need to look at their individual year and the individual operation to see what might work. If it looks like you're going to have good moisture for aerially seeding, then, then uh, that, that might be a very good avenue. But certainly in a year that's really dry and the predictions are for it to be dry for another month, probably not the best bet. Other options include broadcasting the seed with an airflow applicator and then running a fluffing harrow. This will improve germination with sufficient soil moisture, but a drill provides the best seed to soil contact. You can have the it broadcast on with fertilizer or air flowed on with fertilizer. Uh, the big thing on that is we want to get it in as early as possible when you do that because you're taking a, a one to two week delay in that plant coming up and, and developing compared to a drill. Nitrogen is generally not needed on fields that have been in continuous no-till. The option of aerial seeding into a standing crop is becoming more popular with some growers. Especially a year like this, the seeding into things is pretty critical. Uh, and that's where we feel that the aerial application is um, pretty key because we can get it out there. And, and right now in standing crop, it's up uh, three, four inches tall and growing so that when we harvest the corner beans, it's already established. Um, but around here, we start flying on September 1st and uh, then we drill uh, as soon as we can get that crop off. This is my second year to fly it on. We flew it on in soybeans last year before, bean, uh, before leaf drop. About 50% leaf drop we put it on last year. And when we harvested the soybeans, when the sunlight hit the ground, it, it just exploded and looked like a golf course after a week or so of sunlight. And we did hit a, a nice rain after we applied it. So it was about perfect timing. So not saying it's gonna work like that every year. And this is our first year to fly it on standing corn. So we're gonna give it a shot this year and see how it, how it looks this fall. And then probably have a better answer for you next spring. When properly seeded, growers can expect to see at least two to four inches of top growth on annual ryegrass before a hard killing freeze. Early planting normally would be in September. 
the field behind me was, was aerial seeded on September the 15th. Uh, it's got about four inches of growth. Uh, it should be in pretty good shape uh, to get through the winter. So we're pretty optimistic about this stand. If the crop is well established before winter comes, deep root growth may continue below the soil. In some years, winter kill may occur even when seeded properly. Variables that will affect cover crops' winter hardiness include late planting, temperature fluctuations, snow cover, and wind chill. Annual ryegrass needs to be planted early to try to get sufficient growth uh, before winter comes. There have been some issues with winter kill, but again, if you get it planted early, you're going to increase your odds of survival. The other factor, of course, if you have snow, snow cover insulates the annual ryegrass and makes it, uh, uh, well, winter kill won't be an issue. The thing about winter kill, it seems that the wind chill is one of the major factors that causes winter kill. And where we've seen it, we've seen wind chills like minus 20 to minus 30, so very cold. And it's, it's an issue. Uh, the companies are looking at different, breeding different varieties to try to increase the winter hardiness. We have a green period and a brown period, which uh, if you look across the Midwestern landscape in November, uh, it looks pretty brown. I mean, September, October, November, we still have a growing season left, cover crop can grow. So the landscape looks green, but more importantly, it's taking up nutrients that would otherwise leave. And again, in March, things start to green up around here, but we typically don't have our corn or soybeans growing or even planted at least until late April and a cover crop would be greening up as soon as the weather permits and would be taking up those nutrients that would otherwise be lost. I just think it's just part of the the biological system uh, of if it's not green and growing it's that soil is not working for you. You have to have that soil working for you nine months, ten months out of the year if you're going to make this work and uh, Everybody thinks that, oh, you're uh, using all the fertility in the ground. Well, actually, you're not. You're actually bringing more fertility back to the surface. You're keeping the bacteria alive so it can regenerate and die and release the natural nutrients in the ground. Therefore, you don't have to put as much fertilize on 